Welcome back to Comics with Drew. I'm Drew, and as you can see, we're gonna talk a little bit about Jack Kirby and the fourth world and this omnibus. Now, there's been a trend lately <laughs> on YouTube. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you find something that you watch. YouTube says, oh, you like some of that? Well, let's give you all the rest of it that we have. So there's something weird about the YouTube algorithm that it's designed to kind of suck you into these rabbit holes. But recently I watched some reaction videos to movies. And you know, I was always puzzled because I see these people and they do these reaction videos and they say things like, my first time watching Star Wars or my first time watching Titanic, you know, or any of these movies that have been seen by basically literally just about everybody that you could possibly know. And it's like the only way you could have not seen these films is if you live like in a cave or under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of envied these people because when you do watch some of these videos, like say my favorite movie, for example, is The Fellowship of the Ring. That that single film right there, The Lord of the Rings altogether is my favorite film. But if I had to pick my favorite of those three, it would be The Fellowship of the Ring. So when you watch a movie like that and you see people's reactions, you're kind of like recapturing the joy that you had when you see someone else kind of experiencing it the same way. Because I've seen so many different movies, I've lost that. I don't have the opportunity to see things through, you know, fresh eyes like I used to for the most part because I love these films. Now, the reason I tell you all about that is because Jack Kirby's comics, on the other hand, since I kind of came to comics late in life, I have not read a lot lot of different major works in comics. And one of the big things I've not read is this. I had never read a Jack Kirby comic until a couple of months ago when I bought the Fantastic Four number one on Comixology or the Marvel app, one of the two, and I read it there. But that being said, I had never read a single Jack Kirby comic book from DC until the past couple of days after I picked this up. So I ordered this last week. I got it in Saturday. I didn't have a chance to crack it open until Sunday, I believe it was. And then I read the first issue, which is Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 133. And let me tell you what, I have. this is not a review of this because I'm gonna do a review, but I wanted to do this quick video talking about what drew me to this book and the idea of Kirby leaving Marvel where he had created these iconic characters and books and he was disillusioned with marvel but he comes to dc to basically run wild creatively this is something that is super exciting to me and something that's irresistible to actually look into so now that i have the book and i've read the first couple of issues i can tell you this is one of the most exciting experiences i've ever had in my life with regards to entertainment watching kirby do this stuff he's taking a a garbage book. He's taking a totally garbage book, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, and making it his own. It's a tour de force. What I never really understood is just how much of a brilliant man Jack Kirby was when it comes to comics, when it came to his creations. The stuff that he comes up with out of nowhere is just bizarre. You know, a lot of people like to talk about, oh, well, we do these illicit drugs to open our minds. You know, I don't think Jack Kirby... And he seemed like a buttoned up kind of guy. It would surprise me if he actually <laughs> was doing any of this with the aid of, shall we say, pharmaceuticals. But let me tell you what, the creativity that he exhibits and puts on display in even just the first two books is just outstanding. The artwork is just, I mean, I, I, I don't have any words. I mean, it's Jack Kirby artwork, don't get me wrong. It's not modern artwork, but when you look at it, you just see a brilliant genius in the way he constructs his art. And it's the mo it's one of the most thrilling things I've ever experienced. For those of you who have read and known Jack Kirby stuff and you see this video and I'm talking about not having seen it or not having read it, I hope that you're experiencing the same kind of fun and excitement that I get from watching people watch The Lord of the Rings for the first time <laughs> on YouTube. So I hope that you're feeling that because right now it truly is a magical book. And another thing I wanna talk about is that starting to read this and starting to understand Dark Side and Orion and all these different characters that he created, it makes me even more angry about the DCU and how it's been squandered 
and how the art direction has basically been trash compared to what was in the comics and what the comics look like. You know, when you see things like Guardians of the Galaxy just crush it at the box office and it's weird and it's wacky and it's fun and it's got such a great artistic look and vibe to it in an environment and an atmosphere. And you see that Zack Snyder takes <laughs> mother boxes, which are beautifully drawn in, in these comics and turns them into these army of darkness uh, B-movie props. And when you see Darkseid look like some kind of idiotic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle from the bad 2017 or 2016 movie, ah, uh, uh, it, it hurts. It hurts. That being said, I'm in the process of reading this omnibus. It's a fantastic book. You can buy it right now on Amazon for 88 bucks plus and then plus the tax and the shipping. If you don't have this book and if you want to understand comics and you want to understand the modern DC universe with regards to these characters, you must get this book. You must read this book, somehow get your hands on it. I do know that there's a four volume edition of this omnibus. This is just the new printing omnibus. It's not the first printing. I don't think I've spent better money on an omnibus before. I This is my fourth omnibus. I have all the Jeff Johns Green Lantern Omnis and I haven't yet started reading through them all but I wanted to get this one because it was a good deal. It was on sale and I wanted to, you know, have a better understanding of comics and the world of comics and the world of the lore of DC. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. This is a moving piece of work. This is Kirby's magnum opus. It almost makes me emotional reading it. It's one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen. If you like to create comics, if you're trying to do crowdfunding and you're trying to you know, build your own world, you have got to read Kirby. You have got to read The Fourth World and be inspired. It's one of the most exhilarating experiences I've ever had with comics. Watching Jack Kirby write Superman <laughs> is, is fun. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Uh, he's got a real definite feeling, a definite voice, and it's not Stanley's writing, it's Kirby's writing, and the dialogue may be chunky, but it's Kirby. It's something that you just really need to experience for yourself. Definitely buy the book. It's high up on my recommendation. I can already tell you it's a must own and it's five stars, six stars, whatever, how many ever stars you want to assign to it, complete with Kirby Crackle. <laughs> I will do a full review of this book when it's completed and that's probably going to be a minute because <laughs> this book is a thing like 1500 pages long and I am going to enjoy this. Let me know if you have any thoughts about Kirby's work and what you think his best work was, whether it's Marvel or DC, or what his best work was with either of these companies. Thanks for watching Comics with Drew. I'm Drew, and I'll catch you next time.